and they competed in their first Ironman this month. Please welcome Michael to the stage. I do triathlons, world races, and uh, everything 
I can do to get moving. And I've been taking it. I started taking it when I was little. My name is Dexter Gates, and I'm an Ironman athlete. And I started taking a SIA when Sean told me about it in 2015. Michelle Salt, Paralympic snowboarder, and I've been taking a SIA since 2015 as well. Wow. This is for all of you. Cody, we'll start with you this time. How frequently are you using the SIA Redox and how much do you take at a time? Um, so, recently I've been using the Renew 28 a lot. And, um, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, I've had a bit of knee injuries the past couple months. But as far as drinking a SIA, um, I mean, I'm pounding it, especially when I'm training really heavily. Um, I'd say at least 16 fluid ounces a day. Um, I try to take it in the morning, you know, before my stomach is empty to get, you know, full absorption. And, and then again, um, before I go to bed. So, you know, as swimmers, we eat a lot, but you try to maximize by taking it when you're not eating as much. So. When you're not training, how much do you take? Is that dose significantly No bad? less than eight fluid ounces a day. Yeah, it's still, it's still between It's still a lot. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Bria? Uh, mine's kind of the same. Uh, a lot of the time I'll take a, I'll just drink a pouch on the way to practice and then drink pouch on the way home, so eight ounces, or 16 ounces. Um, at, during competitions, I probably have a pouch before and after each race, so depending on the, um, the races, I could take up to maybe 64 ounces of competition. Thank you, Sean. I'm taking uh, 16 ounces a day. I take four out, or eight ounces in the morning, four ounces at noon time, and another four ounces to six ounces in the evening. And then if I'm doing a workout for more than two hours, I'll have uh, four ounces before and after. I start every day with my pouch of eight ounces, and then between workouts, I'll have another pouch. If I'm doing um, a hundred mile bike ride and a five mile run, I'll have another pouch in between those two workouts. You made that sound like it was just like a 20 foot walk for you. A <laughs> hundred mile bike ride, you just made it seem like you just walked 20 feet. Yeah, amazing. So I'm in an anaerobic sport. <laughs> Um, so I'll, I'll do eight ounces a day if I'm going to be on snow or doing a workout, and I'll do an additional eight for me, uh, before and four after. Awesome. Let's come back here to Michael. So I'm preparing for a long uh, try or run. I'll do 16 ounces, eight ounces in the morning, empty stomach, eight ounces at night with the pouch, the very convenient. Uh, but the standard is about 12 ounces. So I think it's pretty safe to say that all of you take some before your workout and then after. And you find that that's the best results for your performance. <coughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, Bria, this is for you. What benefits do you feel when taking this here, Redox? A lot of the time, the, I think the biggest thing is just recovery in general. Um, I think my favorite experience is my junior year in college at SEC Championships. I was taking a lot. Um, that was my first time trying eight ounces before, eight ounces after, eight ounces between every race, and eight ounces in the morning. I felt like I had like seven gallons during the whole competition. <laughs> wow. Um, and I, I, I remember being fatigued, uh, but I didn't feel any lactic acid. It was huge for me. Uh, and I think a lot of it was because I was staying very hydrated. <laughs> um, but it was, I think it was a good testament to the product itself. And my favorite thing about it is knowing that I have full confidence that it's a clean product. Um, the ingredients list is right on the package. I can look up each very simply because there's like two ingredients. Uh, you, know, so, um, you know, I've been drug tested probably over 200 times and I'm confident every single time that it's a clean product. So I've had multiple questions just from my associates in Australia about that. Is as, you know, Olympic athletes, you have to, um, give them everything that you take every day. And there's never been a question about us yet, no, or never. it ever coming up on tests, correct? No, never. Listen, here you guys. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, Mike, this one's for you. Is a C redox just for athletes? No. <laughs> Do you have 
nothing. So I encourage everybody to keep taking us in, tell your friends, and utilize us. Yeah, we're athletes, but oh, can I go on a little bit? Ah, so so what Kyle, I say? Kyle, who I pushed in the chair, uh, he had uh, surgery on his spine, and he de they developed an infection after during his recovery. So he started taking a sia, drinking along with uh, his mother would spray the acia with a bottle on the wound and a rubbing Renew 28 around the infection. It was a two and a half inch hole that was in his back. Um, the doctors were amazed how quickly it healed. Amazing. Also, he would suffer from spasms in his legs. Those subsided to almost nothing. Um, they were very painful for him. I consider him an athlete. He's definitely an athlete because when we roll, he's got to endure all the elements that we run into, the heat, pouring rain, uh, the humidity. So he is an athlete, but then again, he's, um, he has a, his regular life as well. And I do as well as a business owner, and I'm on the move constantly uh, trying to build my business. So that's, it helps me all around. It's amazing. Thank you. So after work, I, you know, they want me home. 
So, uh, so I'm very busy. Uh, as soon as I leave the gym, I go home, shower, do what I gotta do, and just leave. And um, I'm go, go, go. Uh, just a real brief. Uh, I build running chairs for disabled athletes. Um, and it's a constant, and it's a growing business. It's growing really, very fast. So I'm moving very fast all day long. And uh, without the ASEA, I wouldn't be able to uh, perform the way that I'm doing now. And um, I know I'm exhausted at the end of the day because as soon as my head hits, hits the pillow around 11, <laughs> I'm just, I'm out. Um, remind us how many ounces a day you're taking. So on an average, if I'm not competing in a race, I'm doing 12 ounces a day. But I also do leaning 28 every day, morning and night. And I spread it all over my face. And the reason why I do that is, you know, I was thinking, you know, I put, I put it in my forehead and everything. Well, it's close to my brain. And you know what? If it's going to, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so, so I put it all over my hands, under, under, my, under here, over my ears, in the back of my spine. And I just massage my traps. I hold a lot of tension in my traps and my postures and the best. So um, I do that morning and at night. And um, it's wonderful. Love it. Thank you. All right, Dexter. How important is recovery to you? And how has a sea of redox played a role in your recovery? Wow, that's that's my word for a sea is recovery. <clears throat> um, I do have to train a lot for my sport. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and to me, I would not be able to compete even in these races, let alone <clears throat> do as well as I've been doing without getting done with my long training and being able to get up the next morning and go out and do it again and again and again. Um, as for recovery, I am not a jet lagged right now. I've been on a plane for the last four days coming from South Africa after finishing that race. And um, I got in at three o'clock this morning. So if it wasn't for a CM, I don't think I'd be sitting here right now. Wow. Staying healthy and active to me is, I mean, obviously I'm an athlete, but it's its huge. I mean, it means everything to me, right? Like, when I retire from swimming, I plan on continuing to take a seat because I truly believe it's a part of a healthy lifestyle. And I think that it can, you know, it can be utilized in all kinds of different ways, um, to, all the way to promoting healthy brain function, right? Um, I notice that when I take it in the morning, um, I feel more alert, I feel rested. And I, I feel that same way when I, when I go to sleep at night, almost like in a, in a calming way. Um, and so that's why when I explain to people, obviously as athletes, we say, oh, it helps us recover. You have to make that transition into telling people, you know, it's not just for that, right? Like living your day-to-day -day life, there's a lot of stressors. There's a lot of wear and tear on your body just from going to work. Um, and ASEA is um, not a band-aid, but it's a source of fuel to help your body maximize its fullest potential. Um, and for me, I'll go off on a slight tangent if, if uh, in the yes. lab, um, about, 14 weeks ago, um, I started having very severe knee pain in both of my knees. Um, and I'm a, I'm a breast stroker, so I do frog kick, right? And that's just an unnatural movement. There's nothing natural about breast stroke for the human body. And um, it, they started to hurt, and it got worse, and it got worse, and it got worse. Um, I got treatment, and I did, I did all these different kinds of things, and I raced at US Nationals with Korea, um, and I qualified for the Pan American Games. Um, which is amazing. I'm very humbled to be a part of Team USA again. Um, but it wasn't the best meeting. It wasn't the things didn't work out exactly how I wanted to. And um, afterwards, I got an MRI, and this was just two weeks ago. I had an MRI on both knees, and they say I had a tear in my meniscus. I had tears in my MCL, the medial collateral ligament of my knees. And the patella, which is like a padding in between the two joints of your knees that protects your bones from you know, basically colliding, was very worn down. And from just all the years of wear and tear, and the doctor looked at me and he said, you competed like this? No. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And he said, I've seen football players with knees less worn out than yours that have been out for seasons. And he said, how did you, how did you do this? 
I said, well, I think I have a high pain tolerance. And he's like, yeah, that's not it. And he's like, what were you, <laughs> said, what were you doing? And I told him, I was like, well, I mean, I was taking a little bit of ibuprofen, and the only thing I was doing was using the Renew 28 on my knees. And they think that that mitigated the swelling and allowed me to kind of muscle through it, honestly. Because um, every kick I took for those few weeks, especially racing, I mean, the week before the meet, I wasn't able to do any breaststroke kick. And for us, like something we, I do hours of that every day. I wasn't allowed to do that at all, leading into the biggest meet of the entire year. Um, and so I think, um, you know, the Renew really helped me through that. And the doctor would kind of looked at me, he's like, whatever you're doing, it's working. Um, so anyway, so that's my testimony to that. And I had this crazy procedure where they like, they extract the, the cauterized blood from my knees because my tendons were being suffocated. And there's all this, cra I've got these crazy videos you can see on my Instagram. But anyway, so yeah, so the Renew's been like, it's been a lifesaver for me, quite honestly, so. So how often were you putting it on, lathering it up? I'm sorry, can you say that again? How often were you lathering it up? I was putting it, like, every few hours. Like, every two, every two, three hours. Like, as, as often as I could, right? I, you can't overdo it. Like, you can't overdo it, see it? So I was like, I'm just gonna do everything I can, and every little inch, every little, you know, so. It's been pretty great. Awesome. Fortunate. Thank you.
All right, Cody, this one's for you. When faced with obstacles, how have you stayed focused with your goals? Um, I think the biggest thing for me, looking back after going to the Olympics, is um, having balance in my life, right? So for a lot of us, sport is this huge thing in our life, um, but it's not the only thing, right? We have other things, like I recently got married, you know, I'm working with kids, I'm coaching, I'm doing other things. And so I think it's, it's, it's important to have perspective and really keeping things in perspective and really understanding that, yes, I'm an Olympic swimmer, yes, swimming is this huge thing in my life, but at the end of the day, that's just one chapter in the book, right? That's not everything. And, um, you know, if you can find ways to remind yourself of that, then suddenly it kind of lightens the pressure and it allows you to look at your goals and be like, I can hit these, but, you know, in the back of your mind, if you're like, if you don't, things are gonna be okay. And understanding that and knowing that it's gonna be okay regardless of the outcome, it's very freeing. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's my best piece of advice is trying to maintain perspective. I think that's great. All right, this is for all of you. Bria, we'll start with you on this one. What do you hope to accomplish in the next year in regards to your athletic career? Oh, uh, <laughs> so my best. Um, you know, I I had kind of a rough year this past year, uh, just different different life changing events and whatnot. Um, but you know, I, I hope to just keep training and go to different local competitions and to just kind of vamp up for the Olympic year in 2020. I think that's great. Awesome, Sean. I want to keep obviously racing and, and make um, in 2020 I'll be 60 years old and I want to uh, compete in the world championships with Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but more than that, I want to continue to help people reach their goals, no matter how small or how big they are. Um, that's what my heart is, that's what I love doing on a daily basis. And if I can keep that in perspective, then whatever comes after that is just icing on the cake. Um, gosh, after um, last weekend and being a world champion in something way far bigger than I ever dreamed, um, I guess, what else is there? But maybe to try to repeat it. <laughs> so coming home from the games in Pyeongchang, finishing fourth, which was actually really tough for me because I was ranked third overall. There was, there was a bit of pressure there, mainly the pressure I put on myself. Um, I just decided I was going to take a year off. And so I started cycling, which I really enjoyed, track cycling. Uh, but then I tried wave surfing for the first time, and I love it. And there's actually no circuit for adaptive wave surfing. So uh, a friend of mine who's missing his leg above the knee and his arm, we decided to ask Canadian nationals if they would put in an adaptive category. So we became the first two amputees. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Summer, which is in Lima, Peru, 
which is pretty cool because I'm like on the top of my wife's bucket list is climb Machu Picchu. So <laughs> right after we're not gonna yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hit that summit. Um, and so yeah, it's just I mean Bri and I have a lot of competitions leading up to those meets. You know, there's a world championships. Um, and then also on the on the other side, it's like fulfillment. It's me wanting to, to help others and kind of lend a hand to the young kids. And um, so developing um, a, sw a swim clinic company where I travel around the country and sell tickets and bring in little kids. And it's basically like a, a giant uh, swim lesson where I get them in the water and I show them how to do certain things for you. There's a lot of them. Um, and then, you know, let them wear my gold medal and let them take a picture of that. Because I'll tell you what, like, I I'll never forget the first day I, I met the, my first Olympic swimmers. It was Josh Davis. And he let me hold and wear his gold medal. I was 10 years old, and that would change my life. Right? Like I saw that guy as a rock star. And I, like, I was like, I want to be like that, right? And like now, being on the other side of that, like I want to be able to do that for other people. I want to be able to provide that for other people. So um, I'm very much looking forward to doing a lot more of that as well. So. Wow, amazing. Molecule native to your body, and and then also the science of, of 
redox molecules. I was, I've been a therapist for 30 years, and that's what caught my eye was the medical part of it. And so then I read Dr. Gary Samuelson's book, and that got me going. And then I went to listen to Dr. Gary Samuelson and uh, Robinson Ward do these TED Talks on just what redox was. And then I started getting thinking about it. And so once I did that, I got on it. It's been lights out since then. Um, I use it because it works. Um, I'm not a scientist, but uh, my body is my own um, research lab, and it works. And so I'll continue using it as long as I'm able. <laughs> to piggyback on that, it's clean. I know it's in it, and I believe in it. It works. And how did you hear about it, Michelle? Um, I was contacted by a rep that said there's this product out there, it, it's great for recovery, and so, you know, I chatted with Asia and gave the product a try, and I was like, yeah, this does, this absolutely does work, and I would love to be a part of this, and then since it's expanded to Renew Advance and, you know, the new nutritional line, so I'm excited to, yeah, be a part of it. Mike? Uh, so I've taken over the years a lot, tried a lot of products, and they don't really work. And then, um, and my mother is an associate, that's why I found out about the product. And she pretty much had to force feed it down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it took like a year for me to try it. She finally threw the case at me and just said, just take it. My mother's great. She's wonderful. She can cook amazingly. She's here. And, um, so she pretty much forced it on me, and I started feeling the results after a few weeks, and I haven't stopped. And did you say those dreaded words, Mom, you're right? Yes, I yeah. said that. <laughs> <laughs> Cody. So I heard about Asiya through um, a teammate, actually. Uh, when I was in college, he was like, I got this supplement. My mom is a distributor, and it works. And I was like, okay, dude. Like, I'm very skeptical. <laughs> very, and this guy was like, you know, he became a very great swimmer, but at the time he was not a very good swimmer. I was like, I'm not going to swim this guy. And then, like, over the course of the year, he just started winning. And I was like, all right, I gotta try this. <laughs> and then, uh, that's kind of what it was. Um, I started taking it. And, and, you know, once I did the research and learned about it, like, I love how he, he phrased it. Like, it's just, it's native to the body. And that was very attractive to me, and it's super clean. Um, and I started working with Sia basically through Bria because Bria and I were at a World Cup in, in Dubai and <laughs> we actually we ended up having a shared hotel room because like, they wouldn't give her a hotel room. Yeah. Anyway, but she was like, it's not we have separate rooms, it's just sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a smoking room and it smelled like yeah. somebody couldn't breathe. <laughs> and they wouldn't, they, uh, they wouldn't give her another room. But anyway, but when we're in the room together, she's like drinking a sea, and I'm like, hey, like, I'm drinking a sea, and then she's like, you want to work with them? And I'm like, yeah. You know? <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started uh, my senior year of high school, so I didn't actually start swimming club until my senior year of high school, which is super, super late. Um, so those who usually do their sport in college probably start a club around at least 12 years old, maybe, yeah. maybe eight. Um, so I was very, very behind the, the learning curve of that. Um, so I so I really started to see it when I started club. And um, I started out swimming the 100 breaststroke at a minute 12. And just about every week and a half when we had another swimming, I dropped a second. And so by the end of the season, I dropped down to 102, which was enough to give me a scholarship offer to Texas A&M University. Um, and you know, it's just kind of changed my life since then. And you know, it's, I drink a lot of cold water anyway, so it's really. <laughs> Right now I'm training with some high school kids for fun, a little bit of a different dynamic. 
but there's one who's diabetic, and there's another who's gluten intolerant, and this product is amazing for them. You know, there's there's no again, foreign substances, there's no uh, different proteins. A lot of people can't have certain proteins, and so like this is a product that isn't protein based that has recovery, and I, I honestly haven't seen any other out there like it. So I'm, I'm sticking with it. Love it. All right, this one's for all of you as well. Dexter, we'll start with you. What has been the best part of being an NCA sponsored athlete? Wow, the best part is my successes, I guess, but the thing that's more near and dear to my heart is all the wonderful people that I have met from all around the world by being in contact with them through ASEA. Michelle? It's hard being after Dexter because she always says what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> So of course the product is absolutely amazing, um, but even better, you know, just the thought that it's, um, yeah, the people, um, I tell you, with social media, I get so many sea of friends now, and I just love it. It's, uh, it's fantastic. The other thing is just working with corporate, um, just communicating with Lowry. She's wonderful. Um, all the folks from, from the office that I was able to meet, you have a wonderful company backing you. Um, I can't say enough for this company. They're just, they're genuine. I was at another, um, down in Maryland, I was at uh, did a smaller conference there, and I was able to have dinner um, with, with a lot of the executives, and it was just, the conversation, it was cool, I was kind of like, wow, we're kind of in behind the scenes, and the intent that they have is to just make the world better. That's their intent. And I'm like, why? Wow, I'm not going to do this. It's just I echo everything you said. I just feel like the company as a whole is very genuine. Um, I just, he, he's, he nailed it. Um, uh, from an athlete's perspective, we get those pouches. This is a game changer. <laughs> you know, you just slip those in your bags, I'm telling you, like, now that I'm like, the sponsored athlete, they gave me those pouches. I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> also, well, I mean, you know, meeting all these incredible people, um, I wouldn't, you know, it's amazing. Like my mom, my mom's like, you get to meet Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Substances will be tainted, or, or uh, sorry, their supplements. Their supplements will be tainted. Um, I think maybe maybe twice out of over like 400 pouches I've probably taken. There's been one where the seal is broken just by chance, um, and I'll, I'll throw it away. But it's really really nice to know that every single pouch that I take, which I take eight ounces at a time anyways, has a seal on it. It has been tampered with. I take it and it's done. Um, that's really nice. It's nice uh, that you know I don't have to worry about different powders. Um, the preparation the athletes have to take now, you know, by, by putting the powder into a plastic bag and then putting duct tape over it and the different types so that the top end is tampered with it. People aren't tampering with the SIA. We've seen the factory. We've seen how it's made. There's no cross contamination at all, which is such a big deal. I can't you know say that enough. Um, but you know the, the product is incredible. Uh, I take it. My little sister takes it. My grandma takes it. Um, we're going to see a family, really. Love it. Sean? Um, can I say two things? You sure can. Okay. From an athlete's point, um, I race, since I've been on a sea, I've done 48 races since being on a sea. Before that, it was like 140 some races. Never placed in those races of 140 races. Since being on a sea, I raced 48 times and won 46 of those races. <laughs>
But I will tell you what's even uh, more dear to my heart. Um, my wife and I, being involved with the company, have gone to Ecuador twice. And to go to Ecuador and represent Panacea athlete, um, I pay for it myself because it's in our heart. But the lives that we have changed in Ecuador, the powerful um, bonding that my wife and I have had by going to Ecuador, and the lives that we're changing of these little kids that remember us from last year to this year, coming up to giving us a big hug and saying you're here to help us, that's more powerful than those 48 races that I won.
would you put soda in the gas tank? No. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think it's okay to have treats every once in a while, but like this is, this is the only body you have, and you have to treat it right, eat clean. Uh, I think my diet mostly consists fruits, vegetables, and meats. Um, I'll put in rice every once in a while, and I love ice cream. <laughs> but, you know, just eat clean. Uh, as for snacks, if it comes with a wrapper, don't eat it. Try and eat wrapper free. Um, you know, try and make your food versus buying frozen meals. I know sometimes life gets really hectic, uh, but you know, it, I think that we tend to put our diet on the wayside and go the easy route. But, you know, if you have your one car and you just put the, the cheapest oil and you never take it in, you know, it's not going to run very well after that. And so I feel like if you take care of it now, you'll appreciate it later and you can never spend enough on your health. Probably breaking the rules by not asking a question, but I have to say, my father took me to see Roberto Clemente when I was a child, and I looked up to him, not only because he was a great athlete, but he was a gem of a human being. And today in, special, in, in professional sports, I don't think we have that. And every one of you are just gems of human beings, and it just amazes me that Asiya found you and you found Asiya, because it's such a match, and it just, of all the things I've heard today, some of the things that you were saying about what you're doing is just so impressive, and I'm, I'm so thankful for your poor being.